I'm sure you've seen the news, article after article talking up the prospect of a drought. They're usually accompanied by photos of dried up rivers or reservoirs, some revealing structures previously submerged for decades. But for many, it can be hard to really see the concern. The UK is a famously wet country. Complaining about the weather is part of our national heritage. Even during summer, we hardly have a Mediterranean climate. Surely a little less rain and a little more sun isn't a big deal, right? Wrong. The UK, like most climates, is a carefully balanced ecosystem. Reservoirs are designed to capture enough water to last through a dry summer, but that's about it. After all, it doesn't make sense to spend billions on infrastructure just for it to do nothing. Yet, get the calculations wrong and those reservoirs dry up and that precious water coming out of your tap that you take for granted dries up. So to understand what's really going on, stick around as Jonas takes it on. Last summer saw Europe experience its worst drought in centuries. Rivers dried up, major shipping routes became impassable, and even nuclear power stations didn't have enough water to cool their reactors. The UK, like other European countries, saw temperatures hit new records. Those usually reserved for places like Egypt blasted down, with multiple areas hitting over 40 degrees Celsius. And alarmingly, these are part of an upward trend that's seen the Met Office warning that this year could be even hotter. But we're not just recovering from the hottest summer on record. This year saw the driest February in 30 years, with some regions receiving just 8% of the UK average. The National Drought Group has warned we're only one hot and dry spell away from a return to the widespread drought seen last year. Even now, after what is typically the wettest time of year, the majority of rivers across England are below their normal levels. Storage reservoirs and groundwater levels are also down. And perhaps most surprisingly, parts of the UK never even left drought conditions. Yet in terms of average rainfall, we're one of the wettest countries in Europe. The issue clearly isn't how much rain we have, but what we do to collect and manage it. So if our water reservoirs are running low, can't we simply get around that by building more of them? Sure, but that requires investment. Since the water industry was privatised back in 1989, not a single new reservoir has been built. In fact, dozens have been shut down and sold off, usually to developers looking to build more properties. And yes, we need new houses, but we also need the water to supply them. Okay, but perhaps we don't use as much water. Well, that's not it. During the same period, our population has increased by more than 11 million people, and our water usage per person has been increasing as well. It really does seem we're heading in the wrong direction. However, things could be about to change. Last month saw Portsmouth Water sign a £167 million contract to construct the Haddon's Thicket Reservoir, which would be the first new reservoir built in more than three decades. Unfortunately, we can't celebrate just yet as the project has attracted a lot of criticism. That's because a proposal has been submitted to use wastewater treatment facilities to supply recycled water to the reservoir, which would be responsible for the area's drinking water. This would mark the UK's first use of such technology, yet despite this, it is yet to be subject to any planning process. Understandably, this has led to concerns from local residents who highlight the untreated sewage being discharged into nearby waterways. And they make a good point, as water companies have seen record amounts of sewage discharges in recent years. Yet, if such schemes are blocked, we miss an important opportunity to increase our water resources. Countries around the world, like Spain and the US, are finding that rainwater alone is not enough to provide water for households and businesses. Pumping recycled water into reservoirs is used around the world, including in Nevada's Lake Mead, which supplies Las Vegas. It can and is being done safely, but whether it is the right fit for us is a different matter. Ultimately, the issue is that people don't trust our water companies. And it's not hard to see why. They pollute our waters, endangering lives and damaging our tourism industry, rack up huge amounts of debt, which amounts to as much as 20% of our water bills. 
pay executives obscene amounts of money, some upwards of two million pounds per year, sell off assets, putting our water security at risk, and neglect infrastructure, meaning that pipes designed to last 200 years are instead expected to last an absurd 2,000 years. Meanwhile, we have a regulator that defends corporate interests and looks on as these companies work against our interests. But we are not powerless here. The strength of democracy is that we get to vote for what we want. If this or any other government won't protect our interests, we can apply public pressure until it does. Or we can vote for a government that will. As immense as this issue may seem, there really is something we can do about it. So when the next election rolls around, look at what your local candidates propose to do to address these issues. And if they're not even talking about any of this, then ask yourself, where do their priorities lie? Let me just finish by saying thanks to all of you who stayed to the end. This video was really interesting to research and I hope that's come across today. If you'd like to see more, then please do subscribe and like this video. And if you've got an idea of what I should take on next, then please let me know in the comments below. I've been Jonas and I hope you have a fantastic day.